Pace fishing is a devastating tactic in the warmer months. A lot of people have got the wrong idea that it's a complicated and messy way to fish. But we're here today to give you five very simple tips to help you next time you're out giving it a go. Rigs I like to use for pace fishing couldn't be simpler. In open water, i.e. a swim over three foot, I'd use this 0.8 gram float. This is a Mick Wilkinson float. The key characteristics of it are, it's ever so strong, because hopefully I'm gonna be catching some big fish, and the bristle is very long. But, key point to the bristle also, is it's not too buoyant. If you had a big fat two mil bristle with a load of air trapped in it, all that's gonna do is pull it out your pace all the time, which is really annoying and it's not very efficient. So it's a bristle with a nice amount of length, but the stem actually goes pretty much all the way through to the end. So it takes away that buoyancy, but you've still got that length to detect a true bite when you get one. Really important point, I think that is for a pace float. Main line, 0.22 end gauge. Very strong, very durable. Also, the thickness of the line will help eliminate tangles as much as possible. And the way I shot this rig is quite interesting. I use an Olivet that slides up and down the line and is stopped by a little line stop. That's a tip I got from my old mate Pete Goodman years ago. And to be honest, there's no better way to shot a big float like this. What that Olivet does is again, help eliminate tangles because it slides to the point where it's gonna rest. It's not a bulk of shot that's clanging around, wrapping around your pole when you're shipping out. Because I actually put my paste in this pot when I ship out to keep it out of the water. So that Olivet just goes down, keeps your rig nice and out of the way and it's really as tangle proof as you can get. It's a great little addition to the rig that. Obviously I'm using big bits of paste today for big fish. So that in turn allows me to use a big hook. I've got a size 10 Guru Extra Strong Spade on. It's a no-nonsense hook, it's not going to let you down, it's going to allow a big bit of paste to cling to it. Again, a perfect addition to the rig. So it's all matched nicely, strong elastic, red hydro that is, strong mainline, strong float, big hook. It's all nicely balanced, nothing's out of the ordinary, and it's all going to help you to have a more efficient day and hit more bites. The only other rig I use for pace fishing is a margin float. And the only reason I use a different float in a margin is because normally the depth is shallower. So I've just got a float that takes two number eight shot. I put them straight below the float. There's no weight down the line. Same characteristics as the other float. Long bristle, not too buoyant. Simple as that. Nice simple rigs for what in reality is a very simple tactic. Selecting the right pole pot for the job when you're pace fishing is crucial. I've got one here that's been designed specifically for the job. Let me run you through a few of its key features. Everyone knows pole tops aren't cheap. So what we're keen to do with this pot, as with the rest of the Guru range, is have some nice soft fittings in the base so it's not gonna damage your pole when you put it on the tip. Talking of the fittings, there's two different diameters to choose from in this pot. There's the large bore, which is present on the other pots in the Guru range. And also on this one, we've built in an extra large bore as well. So you can put it quite a way back down your pole top, just like I have here. What that allows your rig to do is hang in a nice triangle when you put your paste hook bait in there. That'll eliminate tangles when you ship out into the swim and save you loads of time throughout the day. The holes in the side and the base of this pot are there for good reason. And that's to allow your bait to exit the pot nice and smoothly by reducing the suction in the pot. When designing this pot specifically for pace fishing, we thought about the inners of the pot an awful lot. So you've got the holes in the base and the sides, which will stop suction, and also a really smooth inner profile to the walls of the pot, which will allow your bait to exit as smoothly as possible. Size and colour are also two other key aspects to any pole pot. Size of this pole pot is obviously very important because you're looking to put your hook bait in it as well as a bit of feed. So we've made it quite tall, but not too tall. It's going to be unbalanced when you're shipping out. You can fit a real big lump of paste in there if you want to, or a sensible size bit of paste and a nice handful of feed pellets. So you've got the best of both worlds, really. 
The colour of a pole pot is another key consideration, especially when you're fishing in a shallow margin swim for big wary carp like we could be here today. The last thing you want is a real brightly coloured pole pot that could possibly spook the fish, so we've kept this one a nice milky white colour, same as the rest of the pots in the Guru range, to make them as unobtrusive as possible. comes to your paste hook bait itself, there's two key points to bear in mind for me. The first one is, it's got to be a very smooth texture, so a really fine ground bait, it's just a job for that. And the next point is, it must stink. You get your quicker bites, the fish home in on it more, and it will definitely capture more fish throughout the day. So pick a nice stinky, but fine ground bait, and you won't go far wrong. Another nice little thing to have in your armory is a change of color hook bait. Doesn't have to be red. I've used this one today. It's the red Captivate colouring. I've just used the paste I've been using all day, fired a bit of red colouring in it, or quite a bit to be fair, as you can see. Make it a real deep red, a real stark contrast to the light brown that I have been using. This is really good when you've got a lot of fish in your swim, like I say, pick it out quicker. Or if you've had a nice run on a brown bit of paste, your swim's just waning out a little bit slip a red bit on and you often get another bonus fish or two. They're often the bigger ones in the swim as well, to be fair. Doesn't have to be red colouring. You can use the green one or the yellow one. As long as there's a stark contrast to your standard pace, that seems to be the key. Feeding is the most important part of any fishing situation and when you're fishing with paste, is isn't any different. I like to keep it very simple. As a rule of thumb, if my swim is over three foot deep, I'll feed six mil pellets. These are great for keeping fish on the bottom. They're a nice heavy bait, they sink quickly. You're fishing on the bottom with paste at the end of the day, so you want a bait that goes to the bottom nice and quick, I think. If you need to create a bit of noise, you can catapult these six mil pellets in, draw fish from the open water, another nice benefit to them. Then if I was fishing in a swim that was under three foot deep, I'd either feed two mil pellets or ground bait. A bit venue dependent, the choice of those two really. Some venues prefer ground bait, some prefer micro pellets. Just weigh it up on the day, see how you get on. But a nice small clouding bait is going to help draw fish into that shallow swim where you hopefully clatter them at the end of the day. No prizes for getting your rig out into the swim as quickly as possible. So now you've got your paste in your pot, take your time, no sudden movements, take it nice and steady shipping out, have your rollers set correctly. And when you get to your swim, make sure you reach forward that little bit to compensate for how far your pole pot is back from the pole tip. So you're nice and accurate all the time. And when you tip your paste into the swim, keep your pole pot nice and low to the water. Don't drop it in from a height. All that will do is pull your hook out of the paste and it will be a wasted car, so you have to do it all again. Loads of wasted time. So no sudden movements, nice and smooth, and you'll be as effective and efficient as possible. Mm -hmm.